Welcome to episode number 29 of Island by Film. My name is Wes. Today we're going to be talking about an early 80s point shoot from Pentax called the PC35 AFM specifically, but we'll also be talking about the entire PC35 line of cameras that Pentax uh, put out uh, starting in 1982. As previously stated before, the Pentax PC35 AFM camera started off in 1982. They made a few different iterations of this one. The M version was one of the later versions that came out. And the first version came with a, uh, didn't come with an automatic winder. And that's what the uh, M stands for, for motor wind. Uh, there were also models that came out with uh, date functionality on them. This camera is unique for a couple of different reasons. First and foremost is it's, it's actually built quite well. It's um, as uh, the 80s would uh, release in many different kinds of electronics. It's made out of plastic, but it's got some weight to it. So it's got some a decent amount of uh, structure and uh, sturdiness to the camera itself. Um, but the standout feature of this camera is the fact that it has a maximum aperture f2.8 lens. And uh, as you can see, you flip this one little lever, which is comfortably inset in the hand grip right here and the front protective lens cover slides open almost instantaneously. So this thing's ready to shoot, probably faster than most modern digital cameras, which is actually quite impressive. Close it off, tuck it in your pocket, you're ready to go, and it's simply as easy as flipping it open right on the side. So um, that in itself is a fantastic feature. Um, you do have some simple functionality. I mean, this is a point shoot camera, but you do have some functionality in this camera that actually I think sets it apart from other cameras as well. The fact that you have a 1.5 plus EV setting here, so you can overexpose um, an image uh, plus 1.5 stops. Um, where is that advantageous for you? Well, for example, if you're shooting into the sun, say you're doing a backlit portrait and, uh, um, and you need to brighten the subject out, it's not going to meter quite as harshly for the sun and everything in, in shade or in shadow will be dark you can add one and a half stops of exposure to it quite simply. The other thing that I like about this, and some of the PC35 AF models uh, didn't come with this feature, the, the very latest model had DX coding in it, which depending on your opinion um, is, is either a good or a bad thing. I honestly don't want my camera choosing the ISO speed. I want to be able to do that myself. So this really does have some manual functionality that you won't find in some point shoots. So you can actually select um, your ISO settings anywhere between 100 and 1000. So right in the very, very top, you also have uh, the option to be able to use a self timer, which is great uh, right in the top corner here as well too. Um, and uh, um, flash on. So if you wanna be able to uh, use flash on the camera, you can. And the great thing versus a uh, camera that I used to have called the Olympus Mu One or the Stylus Epic, um, you constantly had to turn the flash off of that camera if you didn't want to use it or didn't want to have it on. Um, this, I actually appreciate the fact that you can actually mechanically engage the flash and you put it away when you don't need it. Um, like really, honestly, this thing instantly opens up and allows you to be able to take images fast and simply. And so that's one of the things I really like about this camera. But you know, um, image quality really is the thing that matters more than anything. The quality is quite fantastic. Pretty great photographs, and um, and the results actually were quite sharp. And the resolution of this lens seemed to be quite good. So I mean, you know, for a camera that I think on eBay right now you can probably get for fifty or sixty dollars, maybe. Um, I happen to find this one at a thrift store. That's generally where I find most of my cameras. So unless you're really, really, really hungering after a specific kind of camera, um, you know, if you hunt long enough and hard enough. Um, you can find a bargain out there. Right now, <clears throat> really, this is the only point and shoot film camera that I'm using currently. Um, are there any quirks? Um, well, maybe the one quirk is it is kind of, uh, has this kind of 80s kind of style. It's kind of, it looks, it's kind of boxy and, and, and really, you know, it does feel plasticky, of course, because you're holding plastic. So, I mean, what else do you expect? Uh, but, you know, overall, um, it's, it seems to be pretty decent. The one thing that I don't like about it, if you're underexposed, you get a really high-pitched kind of uh, um, squeal to uh, this. There's a little speaker right on the top here. I suppose you could put a little bit of piece of tape over it to um, to uh, knock out the sound a little bit. But 
I guess it's kind of a nice indicator to tell you that you just don't have enough light to take the photographs. Uh, the shutter sound is absolutely terrible. Um, but I will say this, if you, I, sh I shouldn't say it's the shutter sound, it's the film advance that's terrible. It's got this kind of cheap electronic kind of, um, I don't know, uh, 80s-esque kind of um, sound to it. But um, the one thing I do like about it is if you're doing street photography and you, and, and you take a photograph, you hold the button down and, and the shutter goes off, that's relatively quiet. As long as you do not release the shutter button, the film will not advance. So you can take the photograph, you can put the film camera down or walk away, release it when you're away from the subject. If you're trying to capture that candid, um, you know, more decisive kind of moment, um, you can release that shutter button after the fact and that makes a huge difference because then it will advance. So you can actually delay the advance of your film which I think is great, so it's not fully automatic in terms of that. But as soon as you release your finger, then the film advances. And that's a pretty good feature for street photographers, I think. So once again, thanks for watching Island by Film. My name is Wes. Hope you enjoy some of these sample images, and we'll see you next episode.